to Walla Sound TV, Season 2, Episode 3. We're here at Kingley's Throne. And Bad Luck Bar next door, Brisbane's home of heavy, with stacked loads of gigs coming through between now and the end of the year. It is a great time to get involved and support your local, because this place not only offers the venue to locals and internationals, but you can even put on your own events here. You got a bar mitzvah? Call Kenny, he runs the place. You want to put on your own festival? Definitely call Kenny. You want to sacrifice a goat? Uh, yeah, yeah, call him, call Kenny. Anyway, uh, great to be approaching the end of the year. We've done some cool things this year. Haven't we? We released a magazine. Yeah, we should probably explain. Mm. Uh, very exciting. We have released a magazine before. Festival editions, you would have seen Not Fest. You would have seen Good Things, Unify from last year as well. But this one is actually our first alternative culture magazine. Not just focusing on music, which will still be predominantly what we want to cover, but we're touching on other facets of alternative culture, including film and TV, Gaming, fashion, <laughs> tattoos and more. You can grab yourself a physical copy through pre-orders on our site, which is always very exciting if you want to add something really cool to your musical collection. Let's face it, we all love collecting. And the next issue, the cover star, you're going to want to get your hands on this, just like collecting their vinyl variants. Let's kick off the episode. I got to have a catch up with Yumi at Six, who returned to Australia in celebration of their new album, Truth Decay. Max from Yumi at Six, welcome back to Australia. Hello. It's been uh, a hot minute since you guys were down here. Halfway through the tour, how's it been? It's good, yeah, it's nice to be back here. You know, the last time we were here was uh, 2019, we bring the horizon. That's and then right. the last time we did a headline was 2017. So. You know, obviously we won't talk about those couple of years that happened because I'm sure I'd be fucking sick to death. Yeah, <laughs> that one, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to be back here and it's nice to be playing Down Under. Yeah, perfect. And you've got a brand new album which has just been getting flogged left, right and centre. Truth Decay is back. Yeah. Um, I don't want to, and I, I hate when people say this and then I fall into the category of doing it. I hate calling it a return to form because you guys are always progressively doing different things but this it felt like home it felt like yeah. old school you me at six again was that the kind of intention going into make this one yeah like you know i think our band you know we've been going for 18 years now and i think a few records you know i think from night people onwards we yeah. we didn't want to just keep making the same record so i think you know we creatively challenged ourselves and pushed our our writing skills our creativity in different ways and um you know, I think that was very conscious of us before writing Truth to K was that, you know, especially through the lockdown period, it was kind of like you reminisce about, well, is there going to be gigs again? And yeah. are you going to be able to do live shows again? And what have you been listening to? And just kind of reminiscing. And I think the majority of us said that we went back to bands that we grew up on. And, yeah. you know, if that was going to Green Days, Incubuses, My Chemical Romances, you name it, Blink-182s, there's... The abundance of bands in the world of rock, pop, emo, pop punk, you name it, there's so many of them. Um, I think it was just kind of reflecting a little bit on, oh, wow, well, what will happen if we don't ever have this again? Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I think for us that when we've made, you know, Night People, Six and Sucker Punch, we had pushed ourselves and we've done music that, you know, we're proud of. You know, I think that we're grateful to have made those records and, yeah. you know, some fan favorites do live in there, you know, songs like Sucker Punch, Beautiful Way, Take on the World, yeah. Give, there's like, you know, Straight to My Head. There are songs that are great Yumi at Six songs, but I think as a body of work, we kind of discuss and been like, well, what will we do now? Can we, should we go back to what our band was kind of known for being pop rock? Yeah, right, and yeah, big yeah, melodies yeah. and big sing-along songs with pop rock emo guitars and, um, I think at the time was right as well when we made the record with Dan Austin. We hadn't made a record like that with him. Yep, yep. And I think we're conscious to be like, well, let's go back to that. But it's not going to be the same as the first three, four albums because yep. we're different now as human beings. We've had a lot more experience. We've travelled the world a lot more. We've written a lot of different songs now. And we don't want it just to be paint by numbers and do the yeah, same and repeat the format yeah. of what we did before. So... I think you can really hear some of that sinners and hold me down and take off your colors coming through on these on this record truth to came because we had been celebrating 10 years of these records correct you that's know right. before yeah. lockdown in 2018 with take off your colors being the first 10 year anniversary that we toured 
when we did the release of Sucker Punch in the UK, we did a Hold Me Down special 10 year anniversary with that in small I venues. Do, yeah, and then we right. did a couple of shows for Sinners. So we'd subconsciously been learning and playing these songs again. And I think that bled into what we're doing creatively wise. Yeah, but yeah. you could hear the elements of maybe Sucker Punch, you know, yeah. not just the song, but like the, the element of the production style that, you know, Dan and myself and with our producer, Dan Austin, you know, we spent a lot of time working hard to push that sound but a song like no future wouldn't sound the way it does without the record sucker punch yeah correct so yeah, we've yeah. we've kind of just blended everything together and just made a record that we feel cohesively represents what you me at six's journey is all about that that right there is the best way to to explain it all because having listened to this album you hear all the errors of uh you be at six throughout the years like you hear the sinner songs you hear the earlier stuff and it it, ju it shows the progression of where you guys are musically, but also the fact that you can throw back to these sounds that fans have loved and grown up with all these albums. Yeah. We're not 15, we're not 18 anymore. We're 36, we're having kids, we're, our yeah. lives are changing, but we're still relating to the way that you craft, uh, craft these songs together and put the music arrangements with it, which hark back to that era. Yeah, and I think it's just like, there's definitely... Um a renaissance and a, rejuve a rejuvenation of the sound. If you've seen with, you know, My Chem coming back and Green Day being out on tour, Blink coming back. Yeah. And the, the, the spike in artists like Youngblood and Machine Gun Kelly. So you can see that and sense that people are wanting rock, pop rock, yeah, pop punk, however you, however you want to fucking label it, you know, it's there is still a craving for that in an audience. And, you know, it's nice to see that because I think everybody has been, you know, you know, and maybe us too as well as creativity, you're trying to push yourself to do something different and you're trying to break new boundaries and create a new sound. But, you know, some of my favourite artists know what they're doing. They just do it really well. Yeah. You know, like I can name check Queens of the Stone Age they just released a new album recently and it's a Queens of the Stone Age record yeah, at yeah. its finest and you know it's nice to go back and hear your favourite bands kind of just refining what they're known for and just making a really good record yep you know releasing it for a new audience and yeah. it's still holding on to that, that that thing that makes them special and that was I think you know I can only talk on behalf of myself here but I think that was the one thing I was conscious of especially when trying to write ideas and songs for this record was not just repeating the same format. Yeah. There's a format of making songs, but how do you make it different and how do you kind of creatively push yourself to do something different and be exciting for you as a, you know, if, if it doesn't excite me as a writer, then how am I meant to make people with the rest of us get people excited when they hear it? When, when they know? come to the show. When they exactly. come to the yeah, shows, so they yeah, hear it on the yeah. record. Because if you're not sitting there excited hearing the music you've created, then why would you put something up that you're not excited about? You have to be the biggest fan of your own band. Yeah. And if I, you know, songs like Mixed Emotions has a bit of a classic Yumi at Six sound, but there is elements of influences from newer artists, you know, that I, not say new, but like taking a little bit of classic writing th formats, like, you know, the verses in Mixed Emotion are very airy and dreamy. And for me, something I was listening to a lot of was the War on Drugs at the time. Yep, yep, yep. And it's kind of like, that's still like a rock, indie rock alternative act that still can fit in your world, but it's not going to sound like that when you put Yumi at six on it. And yeah, you have yeah, Josh yeah, Franceschi yeah, yeah. singing it and Dan Flint on the drums. And you know, I don't need to name everybody, but yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. We, we know what to expect when you come to Yumi at six album, yeah. Yumi at six show. It's just straight up emotion rock you lose yourself in the music i mean i still and have gone through several relationship breakups over the years and still find myself going back and listening to fireworks it's yeah. a song that stands the test of time and regardless of the fact that it was from one of your early albums you don't want to recreate that yeah. you don't want to do part two although it would be a fucking cool idea yeah. though but you you would change it up so it's not sounding exactly the same as where you've come from exactly you know i think they're there has been, there's, I think Yumi at Six has always been known to do a slower ballad kind of song on their records. And I think the one on this record that we have with Cody Frost is a, a different variation of that. You yeah. know, it's kind of, again, learning what the formats and new formats that we've done on, you know, say Sucker Punch or Six. Yeah. Kind of put it on a spin of, you know, where Yumi at Six are at right now. Yeah. And to have somebody like Cody who's got a fantastic voice and it's changing the scene artists. working with people like Andrew Shikari as well so people are noticing 
there's 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 all these new acts out there yeah. and you incorporate the new with the old exactly. and it kind of takes you forward if you will exactly and i think you know as we i don't know if your audience can hear it right now but between you and me you know playing, who's yeah. a, a fantastic australian act and when the opportunity came up for them to come on the road with us we're like yeah of course they're, 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 a, yeah, they're, a, they're yeah. a great band and we sat here and listened to it and actually matt our bass player's like i love this band i want them to be on the show so it's like well yeah, if you love them, let's get them on the shows. And then, oh, I'll go and listen to them now. Yeah, as yeah. well. And, and I was sitting there talking to them, just being like, you've done an amazing job and I'm looking forward to seeing where you go next and as this well. Is, and this is what I love. It doesn't matter how big you get, how long you're in the industry for, 18 years, you're still looking for the next bands to give that helping hand yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. No, but it's just also supporting local scenes as well. You know, we came, uh, as a UMI at Six Act, we came from a local scene in Surrey, the United Kingdom, just yeah. outside of London. And there was a pool of us that kind of, at a time, all grew up together. And then there was also artists like Bring Me The Horizon, Architects, yeah, yeah. Don Broker, and the Shikari. And they've all now kind of grown up through the scene and we all stuck together in a way. Yeah. And, you know, you've got to support each other, you know. It's not about being your own island. You know, oh, we're Yumi at six and we're our own island and fuck everybody else. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, you if you see other people in your world succeed and have success, then great, because the whole scene succeeds. Exactly. I, I feel, which is a great place to wrap up the interview, I feel that the scene where it was 10 years ago, you know, around the Sinners Never Sleep kind of era, there was a lot of... Um, people climbing over each other, stabbing yeah. people in the back to try and succeed. And now it seems to be a communal thing of an ecosystem where everyone in the scene, no matter how big you get, is still helping the next generation, is yeah. still helping the bands they grew up with. Does it feel like that for you guys? Yeah, I, I do feel like it's, it's taken a shift and it's good to see after such a long time because, you know, I think everybody, you know, everybody says, oh, rock's dead and nobody cares about rock music. Yeah, it's well, about those people. It's dance music. <laughs> it's, it's not so much fuck those people because I listen to a broad scape of music, but yeah. it's never turn your back on people because there's always going to be an audience there for it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be the next big thing or creating the next big sound. It's just remembering where you come from and remembering your moral stand, your moral points on life and... You know, if it wasn't for sticking together as a communal scene, then maybe we wouldn't be here today. Valid. So it's about giving artists like between you and me a chance to play in front of our audience to hopefully win some new fans over that will then go to their shows Correct. and then yeah. grow with yeah. them because, you know, if they're on their second or third album right now, they might have an eight album career like us. Yeah. And it's about letting people join in on their journey as well and not being selfish. Music's a communal thing and it's an art and it's, it should be enjoyed by everybody. Eight albums, that's a long time. If they need space away from each other, I totally get it. Like, if I were in a band with Brownie, I think I'd just be neck deep in shenanigans. Oh, oh. so you are a fan of neck deep. Oh, I mean, I know M. Bloom. Yeah, well, the boys also came back to Australia and we got to have a chat with them at the Brisbane Lake talking all things new music, aliens and playing a fun game. Wall of Sound TV, we're backstage at the Tivoli in Brisbane. Nick Deeper here. Welcome back to Australia, boys. Thanks for having us. I, I say welcome back, but Seb, it's your first time down under and first official full-time in Australia with the band. How have the boys uh, brought you into Australian culture? Have they taught you a few things or where are you at with it all? It's been uh, relatively no information. but uh, yeah, Really? Yeah, but... Uh, I love it. It's it's we're bad very hosts. We're bad tour guides. I'm sorry. No, I feel like I feel like we've we've done some some cool stuff already. Like I don't know. It's just been nice. We flew straight into Melbourne and Sydney, so they're just big cities, you know, like anywhere yeah. else. I think we've been. I don't know. I think it's been pretty chill though. It's not as crazy as America, which is nice. For sure, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 very familiar. Um, it's like all the best bits of the UK and the US yeah. uh, put together. So before we get into it. This is your treat for welcoming you to oh, Australia. Thank you very much. Uh, and of course, every time you come, Bro, you need to have yourself thank a Thank you. Bite. I love Marmite, so you do? Oh, all, good, great. all good with me. Yeah, thank well, you Well, we'll see how much. we go later on. We might change things up. <laughs> uh, now, massive year for Neck Deep. You guys played Download Festival, the 20th anniversary. We were lucky enough to go over there and saw the set. It was fucking phenomenal for you guys to be invited and get that call up and, and seeing the set on stage and what it turned out to be. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's a festival that we've kind of put the work in over the years, you know, played a, a bunch of different stages. And I think like, yeah, four o'clock main stage, that's sweet spot, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very, very glad to have uh, justified it, I guess. And yeah. yeah, hopefully, I mean, pff, headlining that thing is uh, 
it was a big ask, but you never know. It gave us a little taste of what it might be like. So, yeah, yeah. it's banging. Because in the UK, you've got essentially like Reading and Leeds and Download Festival. So would you guys be more suited to a Reading Festival? Or do you reckon with what you guys had with the push pits, the circle pits and everything like that, you're more suited to a download audience? Um, I think a few years ago, maybe it would have been more Reading and Leeds. I think there's still a place for us at Reading and Leeds, but um, they've kind of gone a little bit more pop and... Yeah. Um, you know that's that's all good, but uh, I think the days of bands like Nirvana, well, I mean the days of Nirvana have gone. But you know Nirvana headline that, uh, and I've seen Foo Fighters and The Cure and Blink headline yeah. there, but haven't seen a, a big rock a proper rock headliner like do it justice in a long time. So I think um, download maybe these days for for a band like us, I think. But yeah. hopefully, you know, um, hopefully pop punk gets a, a big mainstream wave, and then maybe we would we'd headline Reading and Leeds. But yeah. that was the festival I grew up going to, so I think that would be a special one for me. But yeah. seems to be a lot of, like, rappers and stuff now, which is cool. So. Well, it's a nice little full circle thing, you know, going to those festivals and then playing them. And I like what you said about there being a pop punk resurgence, because we do know the godfathers of pop punk are back. You guys are about to put out your self-titled album in January. Uh, it seems to be pop punk season. How do you feel about the current state of pop punk and where it is around the world? I mean, it's uh, it's it's had a it's had a few little ebbs and flows. I feel like over the past couple of years, um, it kind of I think with people like Machine Gun Kelly and then like um, Youngblood to an extent as well. I think like kind of gave it a little a little lift. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a, a whole bunch of bands that are really flying the flag as much you know anymore. It seems like we're kind of on the charge um it feels quite safe yeah, 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 yeah. it feels quite word, safe yeah. yeah yeah good word for it i think like yeah it just there's no one really kind of breaking the mold too much at the minute um and hopefully we can kind of do that even though you know i think the record is pretty much a straight down the middle pop punk record but hopefully yeah. it's done very very well you know i think pop punk's one of those genres where like when it's done well and it's done right it's like you know who who doesn't love it yeah. um but yeah, like Seb said, it can be a little safe. Um, it's maybe on a on a little ebb at the minute. I think hopefully it'll 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 come back. It'll come back know. around. Well, we'll see what happens when this self titled album yeah. comes out. I guess uh, you guys put out this song "Take Me With You," which was an ode to aliens, and it was released around the time that all the governments in the US started coming out and talking about the fact that aliens were real and UFOs existed and all that. Was that a strategic plan to do that around that time? Um. <laughs> No, nah, it, was, it wasn't strategic, but we were we were all talking about it a bunch. You knew uh, it was going to happen, kind of thing. Yeah, we, we yeah, I think we were all talking about it a lot in the studio and showing each other videos on Reddit and stuff like that. And yeah, we yeah. we've always been into like UFOs and yeah. aliens and shit like that. So uh, nah, it just it just lined up well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, with that one, I think like maybe we we were we were chatting about aliens a little bit here and there. Like me, seven pals are are quite onto it with the uh, with 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 the latest uh, UFO news yeah, and um, yeah, yeah. I think I think the idea for the song came along before like this song did I was like we should write a song called Take Me With You about being abducted by aliens and then yeah. it kind of came from that and that doesn't really happen that often with Neck Deep so yep. um, that was cool and yeah I think just the fact that they announced you know I mean the hearing was the UFO heads out there will know it wasn't wasn't quite what we <laughs> wanted, but um, it's slowly easy it was, at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's breadcrumbs at this point, but um, yeah, it definitely just worked out well. And um, I think yeah. until one lands on the lawn and and walks out, <laughs> yeah. people are just going to be like, whatever. You can do your little tricks in the sky and all, yeah. all the rest of it, but until one of these little green men walk out, we'll we'll wait till then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask because, you know, it seemed like a big plot to get Neck Deep to go alien hunting with Tom DeLong with everything that he's doing behind the scenes. Is that a reason or could that be a reason for going down that path? I would love to if Tom wants to if Tom wants to go and stare at the sky. If Well, I know he definitely wants yeah, to. He would, if yeah. he'd be down to have <laughs> us along, then uh, I would definitely be down to go. And I want to go look for Bigfoot with Tom. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's got that, that documentary too. which he hasn't released. I didn't even know that he had a documentary that he hadn't released, but now I'm keen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, you know, the, the, just the monster hunting with this guy and what he does, you know, he, he's created this iconic pop punk band that we all look up to, but then he's doing these side quests, which are just, you know, you, you, you just want to go along and join, with, join him, not because he's Tom DeLonge, but because it's such an interesting thing that he's found himself going down. Yeah, part of it's definitely because it's Tom. I mean, yeah. you know, grew up loving Blink, but it was also like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really cool to see because I think for a while a lot of people were writing him off like really yeah, writing him yeah. off and it was like god Tom's crazy and it was like 
He's just the, sort of sat back and and you know been sort of say in the shadows about it. He's been like one of the main one of the you know the main sort of um, instigators. Instigators, yeah. good, yeah. The main instigators of like UFO disclosure and stuff. So. Um, you know, I think it's sort of testament to what he's been doing over the last like 10, 15 years. I mean, even if you watch the old like um, Eureka Chronicles and stuff, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, talking yeah. about this sort of stuff. And so testament to him that he's actually managed to go as far as he has with it and been one of the major players in it. Yeah. So and be sub- subject to so much ridicule over, exactly, over yeah, a long time. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of what you think of it, just to like stick at something for so long, regardless of what everyone's saying is cool. And then to have the whole world come around and go, okay, Tom was right. I bet he's sitting right. there like any time watching the internet going, yeah, I fucking told you all. Yeah. For sure. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's good to see him vindicated in a way. So yeah, yeah. there's a few interviews he did where it was like, I can't say, I yeah, can't say, exactly. I can't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. We so. all saw the Joe Rogan one. And it was like, no, I know there's something there. He just can't reveal what it is yet. Exactly, yeah, maybe the wrong time for him to go on Rogan about it. But I think, yeah, again, vindicated now. So big yeah, up Tom. Done. Now, enough about Tom and Blink. Let's talk about Neck Deep. This album itself, uh, we've had the chat before, Benny. You said it's a great return to pop punk for you guys. You guys did uh, All Distortions, went in a different, did bit of a different direction to try some different things. But this one, it's going back to a pop punk kind of overall sound all the way through. For you, consciously, was that something that you took into consideration for the fans or just something that the band wanted to do? They're both, to be honest. Um, I think, you know, we, we had our fun with ADAI and like we loved making that record and still love that record. I think it's just COVID had just got such a weird cloud over that record and not yeah. getting to tour it that I think we're like unjustifiably weird about it. <laughs> so, um, But I think, I don't know, because when we were writing uh, this record, there was a lot of stuff that like could have been on ADAI, it could have been on this record. But I think just when we whittled it down to like what the, we felt the best songs were, they tended to be the more pop punk songs. And yeah. um, we wanted a record that was kind of coherent and was sort of sharp and to the point. Um, and yeah, I think we had to could. make that record to know how far we can push it, and we had yeah. to do it yeah, just exactly. to, to to appease ourselves and um, whatever. Yeah, just to know how far we can push it, and you know, know yeah. our boundaries, sort of thing. But uh, to bring it back to Blink again, we were talking about Jerry Finn yesterday, yeah. um, and one of the I think uh, it was a Mark quote from somewhere, but like Jerry Finn had said to them, like a really important thing is to always keep your fans in mind and to not, you know, I don't know, betray them so much. And I don't think ADI was a betrayal of any kind. Um, but it was definitely it was a, matur- it, was a uh, it was a maturing. I, I want to say this for the fans who had you know comments about it. It was a maturing sound, and you can't keep doing the cookie cu- cookie cutter thing of the same albums over and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And you branched out to try something different. And I feel like it's going to be one of those albums like Neighborhoods, where people will come back t- to it in years to come and go. Oh, I get it now. I understand. Yeah. I think people that love that record love that record too. Like I've had so many people that are just like, I love it start to finish. It's an it's a, it's an album that I put on when I'm when I'm flying or on a long drive or whatever because it is an album that you want to sit and listen to, you know. And it we knew at the time it would be a grower, and we knew yeah, at the time yeah. that it was different. And it, it you know, it, like I say, it was definitely a record for us more so. I think to yeah. appease ourselves. But with this next this this with the with the self titled though, I do think like. We wanted to write pop punk again. I think when we were writing ADI, we were we were kind of done with writing pop punk. We were like, Ugh, it's, you know, if we write another, the, the fourth record in a row or whatever that was just straight up pop punk and doing the same old tricks all over again, we'd be we'd be burnt out with it. And, and it would be this record that would be the experimental one, yeah, you know. Yeah. So we had to kind of break that that mold a little bit and and and, and try. But we know what we're good at. Yeah, we know what we're good at, yeah, and we yeah, enjoyed yeah. writing pop punk as well because we took a, a, a little step back and. Um, so when we actually went back to back to the roots a little bit, it, it felt good and it didn't feel like we were f- we were forcing it or we were trying to just like write a pop punk record, write a pop punk record like we wanted to. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it, fans are going to love it. Now, uh, we want to wrap things up by doing a fun little game with you guys here. Seb, your first time down under. Ben, mm-hmm. you've obviously been here a billion times before in the past. So it's kind of like an initiation to bring you into the Australian Brotherhood because we want to see you back again, Seb. We want to see course. Neck Deep as many times as possible. And the only way that's going to happen is if you get Neck Deep in our collection and concoction of Australian cuisine. Let's so, do it. Okay. Let's do it. Doing the unravelling, we have... Okay. We've got okay. sh- Vegemite shapes. So obviously everyone knows shapes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. That I probably yeah. Okay, I'm down. The Vegemite wines. There's some caram- yeah. caramel wallabies there. There's the Tim Tams, obviously, and yeah. then there's a strawberry surprise. So what I really want you to do is hook in, neck it, and uh, let us know what you think. Okay. 
Both of us? We both? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Because it's probably stuff here, Ben, that you haven't had before. So. I'm not sure if I've... If, I haven't had a Tim Tam in a Tim while. Tim Tam. Uh, our manager's wife, Rian, messaged me the other day and said, can we bring back some Tim Tams for her? Okay. Yeah. So well, this is, this is for Rian. So bring oh. them back and you'll be in the good books. They're pretty good. It tastes a little bit like... um. Mm. There's a quality street. That kind of tastes, tastes like, like that. A quality street. I think Cabrit because of the dark no. chocolate, maybe. I'm not usually a fan of dark chocolate, but... Yeah, I'll take I think those. if you chuck anything pink on on any kind of chocolate, it's just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fuck oh, with I that. Right that yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. fuck with that. That'd Perfect. be good with a cup right. of tea. Uh, now, if you want to wash it down, we've got some great Australian drinks: Bundy, Bundy and rum, and uh, uh -huh. Bundy rum. You haven't had Bundy rum? Oh, good. No. Funny story. Every time someone uh, in my family drinks this, it always ends up being a punch on. So, <laughs> of course. if you end up punching on Seb's here, and you'll well, be just like growing. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Exactly. Can't do as you're told. Yeah, kind of do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that smells fucking strong. For so, a bit, too. yeah, Bundaberg oh, is okay. uh, a country town uh, a little bit north of here. It's about six, four hours away, about that. And they make the rum there. Even for a little mixy, it's quite strong. It's not too bad, but yep. definitely taste you, the rum. Normally that. in those like cans, it's just like, oh, it just tastes like <laughs> Coke or whatever. The smell is yeah. <laughs> strong. Ooh, I don't know how I'd feel about a whole can, but yeah, it's okay. Let me take a second sip. Oh, yeah. there you go. Ooh, there we He's go. gone for All two. Right. Someone's came for a punch on later. It's okay. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not usually like a, a hard liquor the, guy. The, I'm but getting the, the the after vapor, and it's yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very <laughs> not so tantalizing. It's no, okay. Not, not quite. Not quite. Not really my drink of choice, though. Is is rum? Anyway, yeah. Same. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we'll save that for next time. Maybe when you get to album number ten. Yeah, we'll be smashing those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, the next one we've got. Uh, definitely try the shapes there. Okay. They are these uh, things. the Vegemite infused ones. I know I'm gonna like these. So, yeah, I, I fucking love them. Yep, all done. day, every day. So everyone, in. everyone who comes to Australia has to try the Vegemite, and unfortunately, yeah, it's I'll a bit this. much of a um, an acquired taste. Straight up raw Vegemite. I'm not quite a quite as big a fan, but I'm a I'm a Marmite like loyalist. You so. are okay. All right. Big big time Marmite guy. So. There's, there's something about that you might a little funky, but these, these are sick. Okay, these no, are really right. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't mind them. I really like those. I'm down. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right, we'll make sure you take them home, tell your friends about them. I'd have them on the rider, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have them on the rider. I'd probably eat them, yeah. For sure. good. Okay, well, there you go. Is it Arnott's? Arnott's. Hook up neck deep. Mm -hmm. uh, and last one, uh, because obviously you guys have had caramel milk anytime. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just got a nice wallaby flavour on there. I kind of like... I imagine this is like a Freddo or like, what's the... Oh, no. Oh, I don't know. I, I bought them because I had the wallaby on them and I've never had one before. Oh. I love caramel. So it's like caramel. I've, I've, the I've, we've got similar I don't things. I have had caramel. We've had gold bars. Gold bars. Caramac. Mm. Like, oh, a caramel. Yeah, I don't really go for it though. Mm. Yep. Yeah, right, easy. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like at home? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's Cadbury's, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. think they're, they're a universal good. thing. I, I, I fucked that mm -hmm. one up. <laughs> nah. We don't have no, the No, 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 we don't have I mean, these well, things. We don't like, have caramel ones. Cadbury's are, Cadbury's are hard to find in America as well. So they're anywhere chocolates. overseas, tell a little bit of Cadbury's is. American chocolate is so bad. Yeah. It is. It's just full of sugar, everything, everything, even the, the salads they've got. We were talking the other day, there's butyric acid in it, which is what is found in sick and Parmesan cheese. So that's why it tastes so gross. There is, it tastes like sick because yeah. there is a chemical in it that they use to preserve it because the factories are so far away from the, the like milk factories or whatever. But yeah, that's why it tastes I shit. I have no idea. Right? Now I'm going to avoid everything involving parmesan cheese from now on. Here you go. Hershey's, man, is the absolute it's... dirt of all chocolate. Okay, all right. We'll avoid that one too. Last of all, strawberry with a very special paste on top. That's um, okay. Right oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, right then and there. Is this just going to be fucking I need some of that VB. Now, yeah, well, yeah, crack open the oh. VB and get that sorted for you. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, I've never had Vegemite and a strawberry before, so I wanted to see what it was like, and unfortunately, you had to neck it, and you're still alive to tell the tale. Ooh. It's fucking bad, man. Bad. That's really bad. <laughs> On a strawberry, it's fucking <laughs> awful. Holy shit. If they don't perform tonight, I'm sorry, Neck Deep. I'm sorry, Neck Deep fans. That is rank. VB. <laughs> All right. Get the VB in you. Yeah, uh, Neck Deep self-titled album. It's coming out January 19. Get yourself a copy, boys. Love having you back in Australia. I love, yeah. I'm sorry if I almost killed you. Nice one. <laughs>
Good, good to be back. And this is how you get blacklisted. Lads, all the best. Thanks for stopping my wall of sound. And, uh, oh, give me some of these. Yeah, hold on, yeah. I've got something in my teeth. I do really have to get more into neck deep, and I promise I will. But you know what? Um, I'll do that later because this section isn't about me. So I'm just going to tune out. Over to you. All right. Now you should have seen Wall of Sound's UK Festival Assault, which saw the likes of Parkway Drive, Polaris, Stand Atlantic, Red Hook, The Emity Affliction, and Pendulum hit the stage. <sighs> Would have loved it. Following that, we headed over to Copenhagen in Denmark for Copenhagen. Never been there. It was incredible. We caught up with the likes of Fever 333, The Ghost Inside, and your favourite Skinned. Would have loved to be in there. Part four saw us venturing over to Belgium for the massive metal event Grass Pop, and by that point, we were absolutely wrecked. Well, I have great festival stamina, so I should have been there. You should check them all out on YouTube and check out the full series and start making your own plans. But talking about the ghosts inside. The ghosts inside are back. Yeah. You're not stopping. You're fucking going to Yeah, it's a good time to binge and catch up. Yes. Yeah, we, we've been saying a lot. It feels like for us, the, the time of the comeback is over and we are like head first into a new chapter for the band. Yeah. Like uh, we've been back to like, you know, we've done America a little bit, Europe a little bit, did the show in Australia, and the the return is over, and now we just are back. And yeah, th course. this is like the jumping off spot for like the next 10 years to come, so. Yeah, yeah. And totally. to add to his point too, you know, we we, uh, we felt so blessed and lucky to, to be invited back to play all these like, you know, bigger, better s slots on, on the big stages, and, and we felt very lucky, but we also now are at a point where we want to prove to everyone, but mostly ourselves, that we, like, earned that. Australian fans want to know it, what are the chances of coming back. It's, the top, it's the top of our list. Like, yeah, it's we're something, dying to come back. Yeah. As you know, like, we were meant to be back last year on the Full, Full Tilt, Tilt Festival. Full Tilt one that fell through, and yeah. We, I mean, we straight up told the organizers of that, of that festival, like, we would still come over, and, like, whatever, regardless of what happened. And yep, we were supposed to come back and support another band that was just there, but we are, had scheduling conflicts. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, it right, was just yeah. an unfortunate timing. We want to go back to Australia more than anything. So, and it's tough because everyone wants to go back to Australia right now. It's a really busy market. Um, and it's so special to us. We want to make sure that when we do it, we do it right. Oh, and, yeah. um, so it's a lot of pieces. Great interview. I just want to circle back around to when you said you got on stage and sang a song. Mm -hmm. Give us the deets. Um, all right, picture this. Copenhagen, karaoke in front of 400 plus people. I butchered Metallica. And didn't just butcher it, I buried it deep. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> You know, I'm really tired of letting Brownie have the stage. So we're going to open the floor to you guys. If you've seen something weird, hilarious, wacky, otherworldly, send it in to us for our new segment. Let's outshine Brownie. Ebony, we need to talk. Okay. I can't help but feel there's a little bit of hostility, which has been happening for a few episodes now. Right now, I'm gonna make good on my past grievances. Okay. I'm so sorry I didn't take you to the UK. And Europe. And to make up for what I've done, I'm gonna sweat all over you right now like a scene girl over Ollie Sykes. No. Ready? No, no. And now you're standing on solid rock. You're standing on sacred ground. <laughs> Thank you. We've got the whole band today. We've got Axel, Andrew, Adam, Jaya, and Jordan. And I'm very proud that I got that all in one go. Everything's okay. right. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about you guys. You've only released two singles uh, so far for the year. We've got co your cover of Solid Rock by Goanna and your single, Sacred Ground, which I've got right here. Why only two singles so far? Are you just writing off the success of those? That's all we had at the time. Oh, yeah? COVID was rough. 
you know. It was. <laughs> I don't think we've spoken since your album last year and, and COVID time. So, like, it's just been head down, bum up, writing? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. We knew that um, post-album we needed to put something out um, and we kind of were like, what do we do? So we kind of we picked, we picked a track out from our little, like, like a, a few tracks kind of sitting there, which one's the most interesting to kind of put out on its own. Mm. And we were talking about a cover as well. That was actually the hardest part. Was figuring yeah. Out which, like, song do we cover? Are you, are you all like voting or putting forward ideas? How does that work? How do you pick uh, an awesome cover? I think Jay just came in one day and was like, we should do this. I think, so Axel recommended it. Axel being Axel, big <laughs> Axel. Oh, I think we should do this song. And then I'm like, no, yeah, we I should think, do this I song. So I think this. we could do a really good job of it. And then, because yeah. I, could, I could hear it in my head before we actually had started working on it. I'm like, I can already hear it. And it sounds sick. So you, I really you played think... a riff too. You played like yeah. a, a kind of a rough rendition of it, and I was like, "Yes, I can." Like, and that's yeah, I can see this working. The selling part of the song. So. Yeah, and then you got um, the touring member of Goanna, the, who plays the didgeridoo, Russell Smith. Yeah. How did you, you send an email and they replied? And you're like, nice. No, my dad sort of knows everyone. Oh. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> he just so happened to Industry know player. him. And I think <laughs> the day that we asked him, he was sitting in the Virgin Lounge waiting to go play that song with Koana that night. So, yeah, just happened to work out. That's so cool. And then paired with Solid Ground as well. Can you tell us, is there like a story behind that one or why did you think that was the strongest to release this year? Uh, Axel sent an article through into like our band chat about what was going on in the Northern Territory. And I don't know if at that point we had like a whole plan laid out. You just said, I want to write about this. And I think that helped formulate things somewhat because we knew we could we could kind of tie it all together as one collective. What's the article? It's, it was an ABC article. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically the Northern Territory government uh, did a under the table deal with a offshore uh, what is it agro agriculture yeah. company or something um, to basically siphon all the water from what? yeah un under the ground. So about forty billion. Liters of water, I think. Something, yeah, some disgusting amount. You know, it's, it was only what a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I think they're doing more deals as we speak. How do you find out about it? Is this, is this like public knowledge that people can just look up, or you did some sleuthing? Yeah, uh, my brother was actually going through the Northern Territory at the time, mm. and and stopped through the town, and he was talking to a few people there, and they showed him the article as well, and then he passed it on to me. So. And you guys were pretty pissed, and you're like, "That's enough." Pissed, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna write a song really, about this. It didn't really get any traction. The article. I, I, I didn't know about it until Axel shared it. So no. it obviously was not common knowledge. They were trying really hard to not tell anyone that it was happening. Yeah, and I mean, all those emails were released under the Freedom of Information Act. So when the ABC reported on it, I think it was the end of 2021. There really wasn't, um, I guess, a lot of awareness out there of it. So when we said, "Hey, look." you know, we should shine a light on this um, and write mm. about this. And then, you know, almost a year later, we had um, the same thing with fra new fracking projects being approved. So the timeliness of it felt, you know, really important and really crucial to kind of cover it and raise awareness for it. So Yeah, I feel like storytelling is really important, especially with Australian and like Australian culture and history and like Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history as well. Like why... Um, I don't want to say why is this so important because it's obviously important, but, like, is there something more that you'd like to do besides, like, just uh, write songs and release songs and raise awareness that way? Like, what would you wish that you could do if you had, like, the biggest platform ever? Just write about love and heartbreak, really. But I think, uh, <laughs> I think I think I've said it before, but, you know, as long as this stuff's still happening, especially in our scene where there aren't many Indigenous voices, I think, gonna have to keep writing about it and mm. yeah I mean I don't want to keep writing about it but somebody has to yeah um I think this leads pretty well into the voice referendum which is on October 14 you should be voting yes if you don't know why do your research but otherwise if you could tell someone or give some information to someone who doesn't know which way they should vote what would you say uh basically the same if you don't know educate yourself first and foremost um, I mean, I worry not only for if it is a no vote for Indigenous rights in the future, mm. but basically for all minorities in Australia, I, I worry about their future and what rights they'll have, if anything will change. 
Yeah. Essentially, don't vote no because you don't know. We don't listen to the government. We listen to the people and that's how we get changed and get things done. We'll just quote this really quickly. Shout out to Briggs. We love your work. But Briggs said, I'm going to read it here, not everyone who's voting no is racist, but every racist will be voting no. So maybe just think about who you want to be voting alongside. If that's Pauline Hanson, shame on you. Let's not do that. Yeah, um, shout, out, shout out Briggs. Shout out Bad Apples. Yeah, definitely. No protected. <laughs> Um, but let's talk about some cool things. Um, last year you won Album of the Year for the Gold Coast Music Awards or Release of the Year um, for your album Global Crisis. How was that? Did that, like, solidify anything for you or...? It's pretty gratifying, to yeah. be honest. We, walk, like, we kind of were just like, we're not going to win anything. And then we, we uh, were performing and then they wouldn't let us go back to our green room. I think it was Jay. I was like, yeah. I think... Maybe we've won something. I thought we, I thought we were in trouble. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were like, why can't we go back to our green room? And they're like, no, just stay here for a bit. And then they called our name and I was like, oh, my God. To walk on stage? Yeah, and no, I actually hadn't prepared um, anything to <laughs> present. I mean, it, you know, it feels like a pretty big honour just to be included in, you know, uh, the range of nominations as finalists like there's so many amazing acts in there and for a heavy you know alternative band to be included in that um so i hadn't prepared anything it was really funny that axel i definitely <laughs> wasn't going to talk so <laughs> i think i pushed andrew forward first yeah that axel thought we were in trouble because he'd just come out and kicked the mic stand over and yelled at the audience and he's like oh no what have i done i forgot about that <laughs> what the fuck is up yeah, yeah, yeah. what the fuck is up and then i realized there's we're all these show. older people <laughs> Um, they got to get the full experience, you know. It's muscle memory. It was very yeah. honest. It was a very like honest performance. Yeah, so, and um, I kind of spoke about it at the awards and about you know at the time when the pandemic was kind of um, in the midst of things and um, writing and recording and releasing a record. A lot of our peers had kind of stopped, you know, or not stopped, but just kind of put the brakes on a little bit and, and not putting out new music, not touring because obviously you couldn't tour an album at the time. Mm. And um, so, you know, it was, yeah, it was really rewarding to be kind of acknowledged for that hard work and that effort and that the, those awards ceremonies kind of felt like, you know, the combination of that. It was really cool to go again um, to this year's awards on yeah. Thursday night. Um, so we were nominated again for Artists of the Year and Live Act of the Year. Um, congratulations to Bujara who took out um, both categories, um, amazing artist. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it, it was a, a great evening and really, you know, really cool to be acknowledged in that way. So. Yeah, I think recognition makes you feel good, makes you keep doing what you're doing. So definitely don't stop. Um, but you have been getting used to a festival stage as well. You played Unify last year, Thrashville this year. If we could all just hold hands for a minute and like manifest uh, what you want for next year, what festival would you love? Hold hands. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'd go another Not Fest. Yeah. That'd be pretty wild. Well. Amazing. Yeah. Not, Not Fest was the best festival I've ever been to in Australia. Yeah. Very, very well run. It was really good. I feel like um, not fast anyway. Just there's just no rest from the noise. One stage, the other stage. I just want like ten minutes of silence. Yeah, but it was great. <laughs> no, I think that was out at the end of Megadeth. I think they just stood on stage for like ten minutes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dude had to grab his oxygen tank. Didn't he? <laughs> well, in the meantime, we are proud to be presenting Wild Hearts' upcoming headline show. It's at the Stranded Bar on October 27th. Are we looking forward to that one? Very much so. Yeah, it's a really cool venue. Um, I think Jordan and I went and um, checked out some acts there um, earlier this year and um, it's a really cool space, um, you know, really friendly staff. Um, so, yeah, when we're able to lock that in, um, mm. it's really exciting. So Yeah. Teed up a pretty, uh, pretty nice lineup. Yeah. Who else is playing? Uh, so we have Citadel and uh, Blossom, both from Brisbane. So. Cool, cool. Bringing Ooh. out the year with a bang, I assume. Anything else planned or just looking forward into 2024? I don't know. <laughs> oh, we'll keep it. It's taking it in our stride, you know. We'll keep it hush hush, whatever's happening. Don't tell us yet. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming down, guys. It was great to chat with you in person. Of course. It's so nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, we'll round out the episode. I'm Ebony. I'm Brownie. And this is Wall of Sound TV. Have you, you've been there the whole time? Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs>